Welcome to section 3.4, where we're going to talk about RNA, which is kind of like the other nucleic acid. I know DNA gets a lot of press, we talk about that a lot, but RNA is also very important, it's very versatile, but it's one that we tend to talk about a bit less than DNA. So when we talk about RNA, first of all, let's talk about kind of why it's so important. And the idea of this is we have our information, we have our DNA that's storing the codes, the blueprints, that's in the nucleus. But the machinery, so the ribosomes that are going to actually build proteins, so this is going to be the site of protein synthesis, that's going to actually be in the cytoplasm or the cytosol. And so we have this gap in location where we have to somehow get this information, get the instructions from the nucleus into the cytoplasm so we can build the proteins that are essential for metabolism, essential for homeostasis, essential for life. And so the go-between is going to be RNA. So its job is to take things like information, materials, structure, to get those things that we need to the ribosome so we can build proteins. So without RNA, this gap in location would be critical. So that's why it's so important that we talk about the central dogma and we bring up the fact that DNA itself cannot directly make proteins. It can't happen. They're not in the same spot. And so RNA will need to be there, even though it's just another type of nucleic acid. I mean, it's not that dissimilar from DNA, but we need to have it because it is able to travel and then our DNA can stay nice and cozy, protected, and, and safe. We need to keep the actual structure of DNA constant so we don't have mutations and potentially problems. We want this code, this information to stay pure. And that's what's allowed by this. We'll take this information that's stored in RNA, which can be damaged and remade, and that is what will move to the next location. Now, we also want to discuss exactly what the differences are, just to rehash this. So RNA is going to be on the left here, and we've got DNA on the right. So one of the simplest things is that RNA is going to be single-stranded you'll see that in some cases it can bend back and bind to itself with complementary bases, but in general it's one long continuous strand of nucleotides. Whereas DNA will be two strands of nucleotides, sometimes called polynucleotides, uh, that will be connected with these complementary pairs uh, with these hydrogen bonds down the center. So single strand versus double. The other difference is in the sugar. And this is important because it lets you know that there is no such thing as a nucleotide that can be used for either RNA or DNA. Every DNA nucleotide is going to be made with what's called deoxyribose, which is a particular sugar, whereas RNA is going to be built with a sugar called ribose. Now they're very similar, but deoxyribose, D meaning without, oxy, oxygen, is going to be a ribose that's, mixing, that's missing an oxygen. So similar, yes. Identical, no. So even if they both have an adenine nitrogen base, even if they both have a phosphate, so they look almost identical, the sugar is different. So there is a difference between a nucleotide for RNA and DNA. The last bit is that when we talk about DNA, it's going to have thymine, which is T when I abbreviate, whereas RNA is going to have uracil. Both of these guys will be attracted to adenine, but it makes it very useful because if I give you a sequence that's like A, T, C, G, you know right away it's DNA because it has a thymine. Just like if I give you a sequence that's A, U, C, G, you know it must be RNA because it contains uracil. And only RNA contains uracil. Now if we were copying this, you would still make this and copy it as U, A, G, C if it was RNA. And if you were copying this as DNA, you'd see it be T, A, G, C. So that's, once again, similar, but everywhere you would normally put a thymine, you're going to put a uracil. Other than that, pretty consistent. Now, the last bit, and the most important bit, is going to be the types of RNA. mRNA is going to be messenger RNA. So this is the one that's the blueprint. This is the one that has the code that tells us how to build a protein. So it's going to be a blueprint for proteins. So each mRNA will basically allow us to build one particular protein, is how we can think about this, at least for right now. And you'll see these are just linear molecules. They're meant to be red. They're not folded up or fancy. They're meant to be able to fed, be fed into a ribosome and just kind of pulled through. 
So you'll see they're very straight, very linear. There might be some flex, but they're not in some weird shape. Whereas tRNA, these guys are typically bent back and they will hydrogen bond the complements. So they tend to be in more of this hairpin shape, or you might think of it as like a cross shape. And on one end, they're going to have an amino acid. That's kind of their job. They're going to carry amino acids. So tRNA is transfer. And the idea there is they transfer amino acids to allow us to build proteins. Because if I'm building a protein, I have to go from a nucleotide code, which I have on the mRNA. So this is going to have a code of nucleotides. I have a code of nucleotides on the tRNA, especially down here on the bottom. This will be in nucleotides. And I can attach a tRNA to its complement on the mRNA. So this piece here can kind of attach there and bring with it a specific amino acid. So it allows us to take a nucleotide code and convert it to an amino acid code. And that's why these guys are really the heart of the translation process of moving the code from one type of code to a different type of code, of making us go from one type of molecule, a nucleic acid, and allowing us to shift to a different type of organic compound, a protein. And then lastly, our RNA, this is going to be what makes up a large part of ribosomes. There's going to be some proteins, but in general, our RNA is what builds a ribosome. And you can see it's made of these two subunits, and the ribosomes will typically have where our RNA is folded up to give us these globular shapes, these more like lumps. So once again, these are not linear. They're going to be very folded up and interacting with other things so that they're kind of smashed together to give us more of this lump. And this is critical because ribosomes are going to be the site of protein synthesis. We need ribosomes to allow all the other types of RNA to interact properly to build us a protein. So it's kind of like the machine that's able to read the code. You know, kind of like your computer can take computer code, programming, and it can convert that into products, whether it's a video game, a Word document. It's that same idea where a ribosome can organize everything so we can properly go through and convert our codes from nucleotides to amino acids. So we need these guys. And once again, remember, these guys are in the cytoplasm. So when we talk about the RNAs, all of these guys are going to either be in the cytoplasm, or in the case of mRNA, they start in the nucleus, but then they will end up in the cytoplasm so they can do their job. So if you're looking for some of these guys, in general, you should expect to look for RNAs in the cytoplasm of a cell, especially once they're actually doing their job. They might be made in the nucleus, but they don't stick around there. That's it for this. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you have a good break.